Hello, this is Tom Cooley with Go Clever Connect, and today we're going to walk through the process of setting up your Ingenico Lane 3000. By now, you've already activated payments and prompt, and you're able to manually enter transactions just by using the keyboard of your computer directly within the prompt application. So uh, I want to reference you back to your uh, activate payments and prompt email that we sent out to you with the complete instructions for uh, getting started with prompt. When you go to the step two, set up your device, there's a link for you to follow to set up your Ingenico Lane 3000. That's going to bring you to the uh, Card Point Support Center, which gives you a detailed breakdown of the process for taking your box, the device out of the box and plugging it into power and the internet in order for it to function properly. Also included here is a pictorial representation of the same thing. So you can see that the Ingenico Lane 3000 has two power cords. Uh, the power supply plugs into the multi-port interface cable and the multi-port interface cable plugs into the device itself. When you plug in this into the internet, the one thing to remember is that the internet cord, the ethernet cord, does need to be plugged in directly to the modem, router, or wall jack in order to function properly. You'll know it's, you know it's connected properly because the device will say connected. If the device does say disconnected, you're going to want to troubleshoot your connection to the internet. If you do still have trouble getting the device connected, you are able to contact card point support and they can provide some additional support for accessing the network. But once your device is connected, uh, I want to reference you back to the activate payments and prompt email we sent out to you with complete instructions for testing a transaction and prompt. It is recommended that you do test the transaction prior to your go live date just to make sure everything works properly. You're going to want to first create a fictitious patient and prompt and then create a fictitious billing for them and follow through the transaction to accept the payment to make sure that the transaction flow is working properly. So from the patient billing tab, you'll choose card connect, you'll choose swipe card and then apply payment or from the patient check in tab, you're going to want to make sure you choose swipe card and then check in uh, to push the payment to the device, which would then allow the patient or yourself to then uh, tap swipe or dip their credit card to complete the transaction and have that payment posted to the patient's account inside prompt. Now, if you do have more than one device with a single merchant ID, uh, you will need to come into the card point backend under my account and equipment, you'll see a list of all the equipment that you've got listed for your uh, for your business. For each each uh, device, you're going to choose the serial number for that specific device, and you're going to you're going to want to rename it to match the name of the facility of prompt. So once you do rename this device, you're going to want to save it. If you do ever get an error message saving the device name, you're going to want to come in to edit the address. Make sure that everything is completed, including even the address two with a period uh, if there's no additional um, address two listed there. If you have any other questions or concerns or any way we can improve on this video, please let, let us know. We're always open to feedback. Thank you for listening. My name is Tom Cooley.